Welcome everyone to this week's episode. We have a Ruby Rose to update for you at the end of this episode. So definitely keep watching for that. And in the meantime, let's go sailing in Sydney. What a view! How good is that, eh? <sighs> gorgeous. A Saturday morning, beautiful day, bright sunshine, absolutely gorgeous. The last day before some really wet and windy weather comes in. So we are moving because we do not want to be in that anchorage that we were in last night. Uh, with the really windy and wet weather. Partly because um, it's not, I mean, the view is spectacular, obviously, but um, it's quite bouncy. Lots of ferries, lots of uh, watercraft going past, creating a lot of wash. So it's quite noisy, a lot of party boats, um, which is totally fine. That's their prerogative to come and have a good time <laughs> with a great view, but um, it is a little distracting. Finally, it is exposed to the south and we're getting some strong 30 knot southerly winds tomorrow. So we are moving. We are going to go into uh, Middle Harbour, which is very, very protected. Really, really well protected. Beautiful little harbour. There's lots of little coves in there actually. Not quite sure where we'll end up, um, but I think that it's a good place for us to kind of hide ourselves away for a few days. Wait for this weather to blow through and uh, just enjoy being on this beautiful, beautiful catamaran. I have to say that one of the things that I love most about sailing this boat, and it's not actually specific to, to sea wind boats at all, I think it's, it's generally true of most catamarans, is that you kind of just like sit here at the helm and I'm like, oh, the Jibney's cheating in, cool. I just like press a button, like so, and it's done. And same goes for like furling the jib and unfurling it. You just you just sit here and you just do it at you know in a, basically a seated position. It's all uh, right to hand, and that is definitely not something we had with Ruby Rose. But that being said, you can set it up like that with mono holes, can't you, Nick? Yeah, of course you can. It's just that we didn't have that set up on Ruby Rose. So another busy day out on the water. Yeah. Beautiful day on the water actually. Well I think it's going to be the last good day we're going to get for a while. Yes, it definitely is. We are not going, this is like the best weather that we're going to have. So we'll enjoy it. Although all I would say is that the weather forecast hasn't been particularly accurate in the last time. It days. has been extremely inaccurate and far be it for me to like question the Bureau of Meteorology, but I feel like it's been highly inaccurate. So yeah, we will wait and see. We're better off just looking out the window to see what the weather is and looking at the forecast. Five minutes early for the bridge in typical fashion. We're either too early or too late, I think, these days. It's okay. And um, we need to charge the batteries anyway. Yeah, we need to charge the batteries. They were running, we got a little alarm this morning saying they were running low. What's low? How, what, what percentage were they? Uh, it was sort of just pre warning, so we're at 35%. Okay, yeah, very low. So, yeah, we're just chilling around. The bridge is up there, and we've got another 45 minutes of just hanging out. So, yeah, beautiful morning. Yeah. Chilling on the water. Chilling. Chilling on the water. No, it's all good. 
all good. Pretty fortunate to have this. We know that weather's coming in. The storm we had last night was pretty epic. There's lightning over Sydney. We can hear the thunder along with these party boats next to us. <laughs> but hopefully they'll move on at some point. Ooh. Uh, and we know that there's a wind shift. So the anchorage that we were in last night just is not gonna work for us tonight as, the, as we get this kind of front coming through. So yeah, so we'll wait for the bridge, go through, find an anchorage, drop the hook or pick up a buoy depending on what's available. And then um, that will be our safe haven for tonight. So the bridge is open and uh, we're just waiting for the downstream boats to come through first and then um, it'll be our turn. We just wait for the light to go green. I can see four masts. There might be more though. So yeah, lots of people out on the water today. Beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah, loads of rain, babe. Bay. We actually came here before and it was just as sunny now as it was then. I think we're going to settle in here for a couple of days. We've got some weather coming in as we've said a couple of times now and uh, while the weather is nice today we are going to enjoy it. Get the dinghy in the water, go for a little zip around. Um, there's a beach around the corner that we want to go and see and then... In the words of Pink, we'll get this party started. Yes, but not in the words of Pink. We also have run out of beer. So that, <laughs> that's, that's a priority we need to address. And suddenly we're having a really nice walk, which I wasn't quite expecting. It's pretty, isn't it, this staircase, babe? Yeah, very lovely. Yes. like found a random wall. like a kilometer it feels like about five <laughs> it's pretty warm today uh, I found this like tiny little shopping center with a little bottle of got some beer very important for the next few days and um, I got really nice refreshing watermelon and apple juice at the same time so it's really strange because like one minute we're in the National Park and it's all you feel like a million miles away from civilization beautiful waterfall a bit of wildlife Nice little uh, beach. Literally, you walk five steps and you're in Sydney suburbia. It's quite strange. So last week, we uh, felt like a really kind of a really kind of bouncy vibration, if that makes sense, from the starboard engine. We put the um, engine into reverse. 
and it seemed to improve and so we said okay we must have got something around the prop but now it's uh you know we must have been able to kick it off by putting the the engine into reverse and um we were just here just now <laughs> and i was just sit sitting on the back step of the uh, hull and um, i looked over and the water's kind of clear enough to see the prop and i could see that there's a rope wrapped out, wrapped around the prop it's been there for a while Was the problem? Yeah. And there's no rope cut on that. There isn't. forecast the weather deteriorated significantly overnight and we spent the next few days hiding from the rain and the wind. While this might not sound very pleasant there is actually something wonderfully cozy about being inside on a warm dry boat during a rainstorm. On Ruby Rose our 38 foot monohull we experienced this quite a bit as we sailed to northern France in the UK last year. However we're finding that it was much easier to do with being cooped up on a catamaran than a monohull. We simply use the time to chill out, work online, and obviously drink cups of tea. Eventually the rain passed and we were able to get back to enjoying the full benefits of life at Anchor. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification bell and we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Now I know all of you have been asking for Ruby Rose 2 updates and we have these images direct from the factory. These literally came in a couple of days ago and thank you so much to Shane over at Seawind for sending these to us. And we will of course get still images to you far faster than we can get videos. We will have another video about Ruby Rose 2 coming out pretty soon. Now these stills are from about the 27th of June. And what this shows, this is the master cabin in the port side hull looking forward. What you can see now is that the they've actually got the fiberglass insert, which is where the master bed is going to be, where the chap is stood at the very end. That is where the walk-in wardrobe is going to be. And you can quite clearly see those carbon fiber stringers and the reinforcements around the windows on the hull. There's also been a lot of talk after our last video about the carbon fiber bulkheads and the glassing in, and obviously Paul Collins over at Parlay Revival with his Lagoon. Just a couple of questions that I need to answer. People have asked, is that solid carbon fibre? No, it's foam core surrounded by carbon fibre. It is glassed and tabbed, so it should be very, very strong. And this is another still image, again, taken from a slightly different angle. This is looking down from, I think, where the master bed is going to be. Uh, you've got Mike there stood in the corner where the walk-in wardrobe is going to be. I guess this picture shows the size of those windows. They're going to be pretty huge, so we imagine a lot of light coming in there. We are having blinds on Ruby Rose 2. And again, you can see just underneath that fan, one of the cubby holes where there's going to be storage for things like iPads. But this is all going to be wood-faced, so again, where the fan is is where the mattress is going to go. There will be an extended part, which will be the end of the bed, because some of you eagle-eyed people have noted that the bed probably isn't going to be long enough for someone over about three foot six. So this is just part of the fiberglass. Again, we're super pleased to have this. We're pretty happy about the, the, the way and the speed at which this boat is being built. But obviously, we're going to bring you every detail of the construction as soon as we get that information. And this is actually Ruby Rose 2. This is the centre hull of hull number two of the Seawind 1370, also to be known as Ruby Rose 2. So she's now infused. We are so, so excited about this. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do, because we are going to be bringing you a lot of these technical episodes, a lot of Ruby Rose 2 um, build videos and lots of little tidbits at the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye. <laughs>